Well, good afternoon. Uh, I count it an honor and great privilege to, uh, to speak to you this afternoon. It's a great time for me because this is my best time. When I've eaten and the food, instead of going into the stomach, it goes into my eyes and I want to sleep. <laughs> I'll try my best to keep you awake and uh, may the Lord uh, bless us a great deal together. Uh, Kevin um, is, is, was speaking things out of his head. Um, I want to talk about revisioning a missional curriculum to aid churches in the fulfillment of the Great Commission. Um, and, and we want to talk a little bit about our experience as a Cape Town Baptist Seminary, what we have seen, observed, and um, work so hard to integrate in our learning and teaching and uh, training of uh, people for ministry and ultimately for God's mission. We truly believe that we are on God's mission. Uh, like the late John Stott once said, um, God is a missionary God. That's what he is. And so we, we've put that into our curriculum. And for the few minutes that I have, I'll try and speak to a PowerPoint that uh, when we put together the paper with a colleague of mine uh, who is wearing something that I'm wearing similarly, I gave it to my daughter and I said, girl, she's 29 years old, she's an actual scientist, and uh, she's a brilliant lady. I said, can you read this and tell me what I'm saying? And she says, dad, I put it on chat, GP chat, and I also read it myself. This is what you're saying. And so I read and read through it, except for one point where she missed it, because I'm the father, she's my daughter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that part I corrected a little bit. And so I will share a little bit of what um, uh, um, went into that. But as is of good speaking and good writing, it's important to tell you where we are going or what we have done so that you know if I've delivered or not at the end of my talk. But be that as it may, so then I want to read the abstract and just read it as we have written it. And for some of us who will have the privilege of looking at this article sometime later, you will see it in your hands. And so it's important for me to just want to uh, say it nicely and clearly. Okay, and, and when you have had people like uh, Dr. Lawless speak to us, well, okay, I said Lawless, I hope that's the correct way of saying his name. Um, sorry, sorry, sir, but I will come and meet you in person. Uh, I've heard about you from Dr. Diab, so I'll come and see you in person. But be that as it may, uh, my interest is to make sure that we are understanding what the main thing is the main thing with what we do. Uh, we, are, we are prone to emphasizing the peripherals. That's what we are as human beings, but we want to make sure that we understand what the main thing is in the whole enterprise of theological educational uh, uh, missions, and also in the fact that the church is, uh, is not um, an enemy of the theological education institution, but the church is part and parcel of that grace that God has given the church to do whilst we are here. Eternity will come, the church will be all in the presence of Jesus, but we need to remember that we have to do it right this side, and when we go up there, we'll continue doing it perfectly. Praise the Lord. My Baptist brothers are quiet. When, when I speak to my students, they always say, stop right there, tell us more, what are you saying? I said, no, no, let me finish, and now you will know what I'm saying. I don't want you to say amen to what I'm not saying as the main thing. So the abstract of our paper goes like this. While the church takes the lead in sending out missionaries to a world needing to hear the gospel message, theological education institutions <laughs> are not absolved of any responsibility in this task. Theological education institutions are positioned to provide great influence in the life and practice of the local church as biblical, practical theological education that is first 
and foremost, training while uh, will impact the local church's disposition towards missions and the sending of missionaries. To be good stewards of this opportunity and imperative, every theological education institution must take seriously the development of a curriculum that will encourage and support the local church in this task. Before one can develop a curriculum, however, one must have a clear vision of what such a curriculum must be to achieve the task of missional transformation of the local church. Moving from this foundation, the authors seek to unpack the challenge of gaining a visionary perspective of the challenge of theological education institutions to create a curriculum designed to provide a missional direction for the local church leaders. Such a task requires that any theological education institution not only takes the biblical mandates of mission seriously, but asks the theological institution, sorry, but asks the why question of the missionary mandate. Furthermore, gleaning insight from mission sending agencies, theological, educations, theological education institutions need to understand the work of the missionary to address the skills and education training required for the missionary to successfully fulfill this mandate. Finally, such revisioning to a more missional curriculum must have an eye on the role of the local church in the mission sending commission. Ah, that's word for word the abstract of our paper. Um, let me see if I can get to my, my PowerPoint just so that I can have uh, the, the favor of not taking the point, of not taking the power out of the point by saying what is, what is unnecessary. So I'll stick to my PowerPoint and allow me to say it well. All right. In the book of Acts, we read an interesting epoch of what will happen there. And if you've got my PowerPoint, uh, James, the, the, let's look first of all at the overview of the paper. Uh, of what I'm going to say in the next few minutes, and then we'll move on to the question and discussion session. So we'll look at the introduction, and, the, this, this, and we have uh, casting the mission or vision, and I'm using the article the because we have a, 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 a curriculum in front of us as a seminary, and we want to see whether we can have this uh, curriculum transformed amply to meet the needs of as a, a mission centric community that will love the Lord and out of the love for the Lord choose to do what the Lord says we should do. So we believe at the Cape Town Baptist Seminary that doing must come out of being. What we are will tell, will, will dictate what we do. So we don't just emphasize the practicalities of of ministry and missionary uh, uh, skilled, skill sets. We emphasize the transformation of the person more into the likeness of Jesus. We want to make sure that the vision that Jesus had for the disciples is actually actualized in our students so that when they become what Jesus says they should be, the new creatures they are, they are driven out of being to do what they do. All right. Uh, thirdly, I will talk to the fact that uh, there has to be a clarifying of the missionary task. We have no chance in being able to fulfill the missionary task, task if we have no understanding what it is. We have no chance, no way of knowing whether we are progressing in the right direction if we don't know the steps that are involved in fulfilling the missionary task. And so we believe that we should clarify the missionary task so much so that every student who walks through our seminary doors and out of our seminary doors should know the one, two, three, four, five, six of the missionary task. And if they don't know, then we are in a very precarious position in as far as doing our commission is concerned. Um, when we clarify the missionary task, we also want to get to the place where we, we now create 
their curriculum that we think is missional enough, mission-centric, and be able to do that. So if you're a good Baptist like we are, or I'm looking at you, looking so humble and gentle and uh, alert, you're looking for three points. <laughs> and the good Baptist will say three points because some of us, all of us here, and I've, except for a few, uh, are fit to be called grandparents, and I don't know why the young people are not here, and may God help me, I wish I'd come with my daughter who has not been in theological school, but she's a theologian in her own right to actually engage us and ask us the questions. Uh, we say, I, I, I remember point number one, I remember. Point number two, I remember. When I get to point number three, I need somebody to remind me what point number one was. <laughs> so create, casting the, the, the missionary vision, number one. Number two, clarifying the missionary task. And number three, creating the missional curriculum. And of course, uh, I would like to see, to share with you uh, the Baptist Cape Town Seminary um, as a case study of having done these three steps. Um, we are people who talk to each other. And uh, we love the Lord and we love the people that the Lord has brought into our lives to be our companions in ministry. Um, you're looking for my principal, you want to find my, my senior lecturers, you're most probably able to find them chatting to a student than doing anything else if they're not in their office. That's who they are. If you're looking for them here, you find them talking to somebody about something interesting in missions. Right, so, um, and then I'll make some conclusions and I'll make those statements with a view of making sure that we are, we are provoked to begin the conversation to continue the conversations we've been having already um, in this um, uh, August conference. There we go. In the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. That's the text that we're going to use just today to reflect as a paradigm that should help us. And in fact, it does provide a paradigm for us because there we see uh, a revolution of going out that was different from the Jer Jerusalem center. The Jerusalem center would send someone to go and fight down a fire. But these would go there and say, the Spirit has said to us, let's send these people where the gospel must be made known and they demonstrate the power and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we, we, we want to emphasize the fact that we want to understand the emphasis that the apostle, the, the, the Dr. Luke is making here, that the sending out is actually centered in the local church. The local church will send out, the local church will understand what missions is, and in speaking about this just a few days ago, we had a consultation at the seminary where local churches came to us and people were engaged in a conversation of discussing what are the steps that are necessary to make sure that missions is flourishing. You know, we don't want to park the idea of missionary sendings just at a missionary sending agency like the IMB, we want the local churches to catch the vision and therefore be able to generate enough motivation from the local church to send out missionaries. And in fact, that's what we do at the seminary. And so once upon a time, one of our colleagues um, comes to us and says, hey, buddies, we have two flagship qualifications, two bachelor's degrees. One is a bachelor in theology, and the other one is bachelor in missions. The only difference between these two qualifications is that the one has the biblical languages, the other one doesn't have. Don't you think it's a waste of money and time and stuff like that? So no, 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 wait a minute. And the man was insistent. We can do something about this. Legislation allows us to transform a curriculum up to 50% of what is approved and kept at the Department of Higher Education. So we can actually begin thinking about how we can transform or how we can use this 
bachelor's of degree curriculum into a more mission-centric curriculum so that every student as they come through, they go out with the DNA of being one who can send other missionaries from their local churches. So we're wanting to create pastor dynamos who are able to dynamically in, in, engage their congregations and be able to send missionaries themselves. And if you can do that, even mission support will be a possibility from local churches. And so we began talking about that. And so um, a vision casting occasion came about. We had to sit down and put our minds, our hearts, and our learnings together. I'm a practical theologian. The man is a systematician. The other one is a New Testament expert. The other one is this. And we said, let's sit down together and put our mind. We have something to do. We have got something to do, and let's do it. We began creating, uh, looking at a, at a mission of vision. We asked ourselves, what would our curriculum look like if we made it more missional in orientation? How would it look like? And, and, and in doing that, we were looking at several factors. Uh, the, the three pronged factors or the three threads of a strong strand. We're saying we need to know, first of all, about our, who we are. And we know that if a vision has to take hold, it must be because of what we are. We are the church of Jesus Christ. We are disciples of Jesus Christ. We are an institution that is there because the church is there. If there's no church, no theological education institution. So we need to put our minds to what we can do so that we can be relevant. Then we also said, look, we can do it. Now, let's catch some points here. Uh, Bro, Bro James, I want that PowerPoint. That, that says uh, vision casting here so that we can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Vision casting is three-pronged. Being, we want to talk about the being of what we are. It's the authority of the commission. The authority of the commission resides in the person who sends us to do what we do. If we did not say it, it is pointless for us to do it. And we believe at the Cape Town Baptist Seminary that when Jesus said go, he was serious about it. He didn't mean that we should begin discussing only what it means to go. Actually, the best thing to do in an instruction from someone who is great and glorious as the Lord Jesus is when he says, do it, we do it. That's the best expression of actually being. What about the doing? Theological education institutions must equip students with the practicalities of missions given the expectation of obedience. Because we obey the Lord to do missions, to plant churches, to disciple people, to send people across cultural boundaries, it becomes imperative for us also to do the equipping of our students. We do them a great disfavor to send them without the DNA that will enable them to flourish in what God has called them to do. And so we say, what is the motivation there? We need to normalize the mission approach to ministry. It's not a sideline. Everything about what we do must have the thread of missions. Everything about what we say, how we say it, must have that thread. So people will become pastors, people will become uh, community developers, people will become mindset changers or influencers, for that is what it means to be a Christian leader. It means that they should have the understanding that they are on mission for God. Whether in business, let business be missional. Whether in education, uh, university, let it be missional. Whether in community development, let it be missional. If it's not missional, then it's not accomplishing what God has called us to do. And so we, we, we want to say at the end of it all that the motivation for doing what we're doing is because we are obeying the Lord, nothing else. Let's clarify it, the missionary task. A target number of mission courses cannot be equated to a missional curriculum. 
It's not just about adding cultural anthropology there, adding cross-cultural communication there, uh, and then we call it a missional curriculum. It's, it's, it's not that, it's much more than that. The big picture of the necessary actions and tasks for the missionary as one progresses from the first steps of cross-cultural engagement to the latter stages of a developed ministry must be clearly understood by a theological education institution before it can be translated into a missional curriculum. There are approaches to doing that, approaches to a missional curriculum. Okay, we have tools, and let's not ignore what we already have. It is foolish to be inventing, reinventing what has already been done. Okay, we have the four fields of, uh, of of, of omissions. We have the four fields amongst us. We have the, the missionary task. I'm, I'm sure some of us have heard about the six steps of, them, uh, of, of accomplishing the missionary task. We have those. And so if we know those tools, one must pose and ask themselves the question, how do these approaches affect the concrete reality on the ground of our students and our community? Is it something that can happen or not? So we look at, at that. Let me, let me say, uh, the four fields approach, this has been used by Cape Town Baptist Seminary to address the challenges of developing an effective evangelism and church planting curriculum. We say, if you want the churches to do something, you must teach the churches that idea. If you don't teach it, they won't stumble upon it. So that's why the Lord in the Great Commission emphasized the aspect of teaching. Teaching, 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 teaching. And so the Lord has given us the grace, and when you look at the faculty of the Cape Town Baptist Seminary, each one of those faculty members have no less than 11 years of dedicated aggressive and passionate theological education to the level of a PhD. And, and we're saying to ourselves, the Lord did not do this investment in our lives just so that we can oh, have a small impact. We want big impact. And so we want a missional uh, curriculum, a curriculum that will be the DNA of the graduates that we send out. And um, when we noticed that our churches were struggling in the area of evangelism. We made evangelism um, uh, uh, training a very rigorous part of the pastor's curriculum that we're training and churning out of our seminary to the point that to this very day, we get invitations from the local churches to go and do evangelism training for their church members. And as a result of that, we are seeing churches sprouting all over the, the city of, more churches being planted by graduates of the Cape Town Baptist Seminary, more than the association, the Baptist Association is, is planting. And I think that's a desirable effect that we've been praying and saying that the Lord would give us the grace to do. Church planting, we have also begun giving church planting skills to our graduates. We say, look guys, when you come in from the very first year that you go through, why don't you think about planting a church? How do you plant a church? What are the dynamics of planting a church? And because of that um, emphasis, we are seeing some churches writing in their constitutions, this church will plant one church every year. And we have one such church in the Eastern Cape that has put that in its constitution and therefore every year they're looking out and planting churches. We thank God for that impact. So a natural progression in the task of church planting provided a basic structure for the order of courses resulting in a greater interconnection of courses allowing our students to build upon skills learned in their studies. And we know that four fields approach. The first you find 
uh, finding God-prepared people, bring them in, and then reproducing evangelism. Number two, secondly, we see reproducing disciples, disciples and uh, reproducing churches. And at the center of that, or whilst every stage of that, the four steps are happening, we are also reproducing leaders that we are going to use as a seed plant for another church. So from the very first step of entry, we are aware we are entering this field to plant another church. Everyone who comes in through there will have to hear about the fact that the Great Commission is connected to church planting. Um, the four fields, therefore, in our application and curricular development has been like this. So the first, um, the entry, Theology of evangelism is taught, and uh, if, he, if the guy missed it, we still repeat it, some theology of evangelism in the, second, in the second step of evangelism as well, as they do the course. And we tell our students, part of your assessment is you must tell us how many gospel conversations you've had. Okay, it's not just about learning the theory of evangelism or how to answer a Jehovah's Witness. We want to see that you're actually doing it. And one such student discovered that the, the, the taxi or the combis, what do we call them here in, 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 in East Africa? The matatos, she took that matato and every time there are so many people and so she would have gospel conversations in that context. And you guess what? She came to graduation, it was not easy. It was not difficult for her, rather, to find what it means to be a minister of the gospel. Start with your evangelism. So second, and then discipleship. We teach urban evangelism. We are in an urban area, and so we want to make sure that we are contextual. We want to make sure that we're able to reach the Muslims. Cape Town is 15% Muslim population. We don't want to ignore them. We want to make sure that our students know how to engage the Muslims. And so we teach that as well. Church planting methodology, we also teach it in the, in the discipleship arena. We say, look, we're teaching you discipleship, not just so that you can have uh, 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 the status of becoming an elder, like in the Jehovah's Witnesses, when you have had so many conversations, they make you an elder. No, the goal of discipleship there is that you must form a healthy church somehow, okay? And of course, health formation, health church formation as a fourth step in church planting methodology is taught. Um, the total missionary task approach looks like that. This is a broader, uh, more developed model that maintains the flow and the big picture of the four fields while engaging intentionally with the local church in its role of mission sending in cross-cultural ministry. We then asked ourselves, okay, we've been able to cast the vision. We've been able to clarify um, the missional curriculum, I mean, the missional task. We also need to create now a curriculum. And that now it comes to the boats and nuts of actually doing it. Now, it won't happen by, by chance. We believe that some intentionality must go into creating that curriculum. And so we sat down together and said, this is what we're teaching our students. For the past 40 plus years, and by the way, I think we're gonna be 50 years in existence, and some of our guys have been teaching on our faculty for 25 years. Our own principal has been there for so many years, and, and, uh, and, and we're saying, this is what we've been. How do we want to be in the next 50 years? So we look at our curriculum. How do we create such a curriculum? And so the definite article there comes in, creating the missional curriculum. Uh, let me say a few things before I make the punchline point here under. Ford, uh, a theological education specialist of an evangelical tradition, says curriculum is all of life's experiences and happenings. It's all of life's experiences and happenings. It's not just, it's not just what we are giving them, as lectures, assignments, and exams, and degree papers or certificates, curriculum is much more than that. 
He further goes on to say, curriculum with the roots that it comes from is a running or a race course which exists only where true learning experiences take place. In other words, some people have no curriculum whatsoever because they don't learn a thing. And if we're not teaching, we are actually not also uh, being effective in making sure that our students are learning from what we are teaching, we are also missing out the curriculum is wasted. So we want to see some kind of intentionality and our ability to actually press on and press into doing that which God has made the theological educational institution to exist for. And so Cape Town Baptist Seminary um, believes that the sum of all learning experiences resulting from a curriculum plan that is directed towards achieving the Cape Town Baptist Seminary objective is what should constitute what we will call our curriculum. And therefore, we have a mission about it. We have a mission of curriculum to, to, to talk about mission-centric enough and able to draw in the DNA so that whoever comes through our doors must go and whenever they're doing whatever they're doing, they must ask themselves, how is what I'm doing ultimately contributing to fulfilling the Great Commission? And if that's not happening, then the Holy Spirit will convict them so hard that they will have no other way but to do what they had the Spirit teach them in our, in our, from the Bible in our seminary. So, Curriculum is more than a track of learning, but everything that happens in the environment and circumstances of learning and should not separate proclamation from demonstration. So if we're gonna fulfill, say what we proclaim, we must try and see it happen whilst the students are with us. So we, we say, guys, you're gonna be preaching the gospel there. Make sure that you can also demonstrate what it means to be a disciple of Christ. Uh huh. But that aside, we also are aware that there are concrete realities in our communities. The history of our seminary is that it was born out of uh, extreme injustice. Because at one time, the only Baptist seminary we had was in Johannesburg, and only two people of color were allowed to go and study. Uh, at that seminary, otherwise they had broken the law. And so the brothers, our white brothers, were very good at that. They made sure they only allowed two, and they made it a point that the, those two black people, by a certain time, they were out of the area. Okay, and another white brother says, I'm not gonna allow this. I'm also going to start something for these very people that you want, don't want to come to us. So Cape Town Baptist Seminary was open so that uh, the Johannesburg Hub is training the white folk and the people of color are being trained in, 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 the, in the tip of the African continent in Cape Town. And of course, those white friends of ours who were um, godly enough to see the evil of apartheid chose to come and study at Cape Town. And I've continued to do so, we're grateful for that. But because we were disadvantaged way back then, we couldn't get a campus on the beautiful scenic beaches of Cape Town. We got it in between two people of color uh, communities. One was black on, the, on their one side, separated by a massive national road. The other side was for the coloreds, those were not white, enough to go to Jobbik, and so we went to this seminary to study there. Okay. And we have lived with that. We have seen the differences of students who come in. Some come in and they don't talk about a cent, needing a cent to pay for their fees. Other come, others come in and every semester, they're about to be expelled for not paying their fees. And the visionary principal says, no, it can't be. Let's find a way of keeping these guys in our institution because they are the ones who are going to take the gospel to the 90% population of South Africa. White is only a small percentage. Let me say four million whites 
And let's talk about 51 million blacks. And we're not reaching them. So let's do something about it. So we need to create a curriculum. And so we did create a curriculum that's mission enough to begin making a dent there. And so if you come to Cape Town Baptist Seminary, there's no racial segregation. We are the same. And so as we are represented today here, you will see there's an Indian, there's an American white, there's a Zambian black coming to speak to us today because we believe we are sent by God to change that dynamic. The gospel affects racial relations. So in creating uh, the missional curriculum, theological education institutions need to, to develop integrative, and that has been said about already, normative because it's based in scripture, contextual because it inter, uh, interconnects with contextual realities, uh, and it has to be a missional um, curricula as well, reaching out. We are not going to wait and say, let them come, we are going where they are. The goal command must be taken seriously. Theological education institutions need to equip students to be able to contextualize their theological training cross-culturally. Mm. One student went into the fridge that is kept in the student apartment and he took some food that was put there. And the one who put the food there said, who took my food? And the brother said, this is our fridge. <laughs> what is put in the fridge is for us all. <laughs> Ubuntu. <laughs> Uh, my colleagues from Cape Town Baptist Seminary says it's not, it just hasn't happened once several times. Because this guy has been so hungry and he's wondering, how can I starve in the land of plenty, in the fridge of plenty? There's plenty food in the fridge. <laughs> and I'm starving, I want to get it. And he goes and gets the food that is not his. And the owner comes and says, who took the food? He says, I did. No, brother, that is stealing. I said, is it your food? <laughs> yes, it's, your food. it's my food. Where did you put it? In our fridge. Is it our fridge? Yes, it is our fridge. <laughs> Theological education institutions need to have the Bible as the authoritative source for training so that the institution is always seeking to offer the Bible's answers, the Bible's answers. We're not asking that we go and provide our answers. The Bible must provide those answers to the things that they're grappling with. And I think that's the heart of contextualization. We go in there and see what's going on there, and then we let the Bible provide us with the solutions. The answers. So, and then find, we need to also be aware that the scope, ah, you're a good man, you picked that one up. Thank you, my brother. The scope of an effective curriculum, therefore, must succeed in the development of the spiritual formation of the students, impart a general understanding needed to function in any ministry and Thirdly, address specific skills needed to minister faithfully and fruitfully cross-culturally. All right, spiritual formation will happen. We're not just there to make the head rich and the heart poor. We are there to make the head rich, but we also make the heart even better enlightened so that the activities of the hands are also enlightened. So we believe that from first year as a student comes in, we have a formation of theology, spiritual formation theology, I mean course, and we don't just teach it as an isolated subject, we teach it with the idea of saying, look, you're gonna be a pastor, you're gonna be a business uh, in, uh, transformational leader, you're gonna be a, an NGO, or non-governmental organization leader, but you see, you need to be spirit-led where you're going. You need to be biblical where you're going. And then also there comes 
times of testing, everybody who has ever gone in ministry and has never been tested, perhaps they're doing the wrong ministry that doesn't need the devil's opposition. So we seek the Lord's help that within the DNA of our teaching that this formation is happening and the students are growing spiritually, they're becoming more like Christ. But that's not all. We also want some knowledge, impartation. There's got to grow. Um, in the knowledge of Christ, in the knowledge of the Bible, one of the things that we teach is we meant to make sure that the student understands the Bible from beginning to end. And where we are, we need to locate ourselves in God's salvation history so that we can be able to integrate our practice, our ministry, with what God is doing with a view of what is going to come at the end of time. So we have what we call introduction to biblical theology, and we emphasize it, we teach it. Their skills. We want our students to interpret the scriptures well. We want them to preach well. How about speaking nicely? After lunch, I was expecting you to close your eyes, but I kept them open. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> we want them to know how to speak well. We want them to know how to write a proposal for a church plant. How do you put together a church planting proposal? So every student who comes through the doors of our seminary, before they leave our seminary, they should have an understanding of what it means to do research methodology to the point of producing a mini thesis on any interest of some. And so that happens in our, in our, in our institution. Um, so Cape Town Baptist Seminary, the case study, um, the, sem the seminary currently offers the following degrees, the Bachelor of Theology and the Bachelor of Ministry. And like I said at the beginning, the only difference in the two qualifications is that some people say, I don't have the head for Greek. I was not meant for Hebrew. I was meant for English or I was meant for the other language. So I would do the theology, leave the languages to the translators. So they do get a training, they do get this discipleship, they do get the spiritual formation, they do get the, the knowledge of all that it takes, but then it's the same, it's the same product. So we, like we said, in, um, we, we sat together and began thinking through the process of revisioning our curriculum. And in January 2024, uh, Cape Town Baptist Seminary will launch a new Bachelor of Ministry degree in intercultural studies. The whole point is that we want to see people who are cultural savvy. They don't have to just wonder about and make all the mistakes. At least they have the basic skills to begin understanding whether they are making sense or not. Um, one of my friends taught a course in eco-theology and was pushing the idea to say, the African mindset, once they become Christians, they become dirty because everything belongs to God. You can throw it anywhere and it doesn't matter. And so she began to say, look, let's, let's try and teach people how to look after what God has given us. Um, there was some pushback because the emphasis was too much. But also we got the point clear. We need to ask ourselves, how do people change? So therefore, we have cultural anthropology as part of our study uh, curriculum. Now, I want us to look very briefly at what we, sorry, um, what we are doing. Um, now, this is a bachelor's degree in the orphan in 2024. And we're talking about it like this because it's a way of saying we want it to see it happen. Uh, we're not imposing a minority world agenda on an African institution. But what we are saying is we are African enough to begin understanding the issues that are affecting us here, and let's begin addressing them by putting them in our causes or in the subjects that we teach. And so like I said, we came together, and in fact we called a vision, I mean a curriculum development committee, not one person, we had people represented from the IMB. We had people represented with, with those who are doing Muslim evangelism. We had people represented who are doing practical theology. We sat down together and we began saying, what is it that we want to see 
happen in our student? What is the important points that we want to happen? And so these courses were actually brought into, into the, the, the way they appear there. So um, uh, we, we, you see the ones that are highlighted in something that looks like brown or red there. These are the intentionally placed in an already existing curriculum, embedded in there, so that the student does not miss out what they could have got from the Bachelor of Ministry degree, but they still get what they could get from the Bachelor of Ministry degree and still go out at the same time, able to do the work of missions in an informed manner. Um, you, you can see first, first year and second year, and you see that square bracket there? It says M-I-L. That is just a short way of saying Ministry Integrated Learning. In the second year, the student is placed in a local church. In a local church with an, uh, an appointed mentor who is an experienced mission, uh, minister, and we supervise the student from the seminary and we have a conversation around their struggles. And we want to make sure that by the time they get into the fourth year when they're graduating, their roots are deep enough in the local church because the local church is a sending, mission, is a sending agency of all missions. And also we want to see that the, 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 the man who comes out of the seminary has some idea of what it means to be in a local church. You know the preacher's kid who was attending um, uh, a revival meeting, and everybody stood up and says, man, me, I was a drug addict, and I did what I did, and uh, okay, this one says I murdered so many people. This one says I'd saved so many times. This one says, oh, man, I was a womanizer. And the man says, me, I got saved at five years. So what am I going to say? And so the young man stands up and he says, guys, I've never done all what you've done, but I want to tell you that I survived church. <laughs> you survive church. Church is a good place to be, but you also must be good at heart to know that it can be rough, rougher from people of, of faith like us. I got 10 minutes to finish. Thank you. Um, I think I'm almost there, Dr. Rogers. You can see, uh, wait, bro, I've got you spellbound. Move. <laughs> Conclusion. That's how you respond to bishops when they say, stop. <laughs> you obey. So four points out of what I've said, and I hope that I've said what we needed to say, and I will ask some questions that we can discuss um, therefrom. Firstly, the revisioning of curriculum is to reflect a missional mindset. And later, I think in this conference, in this consultation, we'll have the opportunity to be engaged or to be taught how to revise or how to create a curriculum, okay? Um, it's, it must be a mindset that reflects God's command, character, and compassion for the lost. If that revisioning of the curriculum does not meet that mission or mindset, it's actually meaningless and uh, has no reach beyond the institution's walls. A primary task of the theological education institution, therefore, is equipping the pastor to lead their church in mission or ministry, not only to see the lost engaged, but to see missionaries raised up. You won't get a missionary from a Muslim unless they have been disciples, they have been discipled by a trained pastor or an untrained pastor, as it were, somewhere. Our church members, our local congregation is a seminary in that sense. The seed for getting missionaries is there in front of us every day as we preach and receive the salary from them. 
that is the seedbed. The secondary task of the Theological Educational Institute is to equip those called to missionary work to work in a cross-cultural setting. And that's the secondary task. We must do it. Not primary, but we must do it. It will come from the local church as well. A mission-centric curriculum must, must be seen as an integrative, holistic training that incorporates missionary skills into the broader theological training and infuses the broader theological training with a missional focus. I guess I have, I, have, I, I have nothing to say. If I say more than this, I'll be taking the power out of this PowerPoint. Thank you. Thank you.